Hi, I'd like to introduce users to the new Spline Control Motion Modifier. You can use this tool to animate cameras, airplanes, trains, tails, and tentacles. But before you can do that, you'll need to know how it works. First, I'm going to pull up the classic scene editor so that you can have an overview of this scene while I'm working on it. Next, I'm going to add a null object and call it Spline. Naming conventions do not matter to spline control, but it's always a good idea to follow clear naming conventions when setting up a scene. The next thing I'm going to do is add another null, and I'm going to call it node. Then I'm going to make four clones of it. And I'm going to parent all of these node nulls to the spline node. And I'm going to space them apart in the order that they appear in the scene editor. So now I have a parent item with five children. These five children will represent the nodes of my spline. To create a spline, I'm going to select the light, type M for motion options, and then I'm going to change the spline control from none to spline. What spline control did was analyze the children of this spline control object, and it drew a spline through these children in the order that they were listed in the scene editor. This spline represents an animatable path for the light to follow. And as you can see, it's overwritten the position and rotation channels of this item. To move the light along the path, I will need to animate its Z position, which is currently not at zero. If it was at zero, it would be at the head of the spline, because when you apply spline control to an item, by default it overrides the position and rotation data. And the X and Y positions are completely overridden, but Z gets an interesting twist. When spline control is involved, Z will represent the distance traveled along that spline. So zeroing out the Z position will place it at the head of the spline, moving it farther on the Z axis will, instead of moving it down the Z axis itself, it'll instead it'll move it an equivalent distance along the spline. So to animate this item moving along the track, animate its Z position. It starts out with a value of zero, which places it at the head of the spline. So give it a positive value at frame 30, key it on the Z, and by animating the Z position that gets translated into getting pushed along the spline. I'd also like to show how child objects would get treated, so I'm going to add a light and parent it to the first light, and the child just moves with the parent. If I gave the child a Z offset, again it still moves with the parent, but notice that's not adhering to the spline, it's actually off of the spline right there. But if I were to go to the motion options for this child and assign it to the same spline, now it completely adheres to the spline. So if I were to make a clone of this child, which has a Z offset and which is tracking the spline, and parent it to that. Now I've got three objects snaking along that spline. These two objects are not animated on their Z position. They have no animation whatsoever, but this item is. The parent is pushing its children along the length of the spline. So if you have a chain of items linked together, and they're all affected by spline control. You can see that every one of them has spline control applied. You only need to animate the parent's Z position to push the children along that spline. Let's make the camera follow these lights along the spline. So I'm going to choose the spline for the camera, zero out its Z position so that it's at the head of the spline. Now I'm going to give it a negative value so that it pulls back from the end of the spline. And then at frame 30, 
I'll give it a positive value so that it lags behind this train of lights. And now I have the camera following these lights along the spline. The camera can have a different position at any time. It's not parented to these lights. So it doesn't even have to travel the same rate of speed. I can also envelope the speed of the camera so that it doesn't go at a constant rate. So now it starts off slowly and then speeds up. A few more tips about spline control. You can animate the nulls over time to change the path over time. You can also twist the nulls to twist the path. This might be suitable if you have a roller coaster or if you're using this to animate an aircraft that has to be banking at that point in the path. I'd also like to show you how you can use spline control on a bone chain. I'm going to add a null object, move it off the origin so that you can get a better look at it, and I'm going to add child bones to it. Select all the bones, apply this spline as its spline control, and that's it. The bone chain is now manipulated by the exact same spline that the camera and the lights are following along. And that's it.